Hi guys and welcome back to Creative Pet Keeping. Today I am finally updating you on the fish that I was waiting to get for months. That's why I had this 10 gallon sitting here and ready. And I finally have the cute little, oh they're gonna hide as I get closer, tiny fish that I really wanted to have for a long time. These guys are shell dwellers from Lake Tanganyika. They're called Near Lamprologus Multifashion multi Fasciatus? I can't ever pronounce that properly. Or Maltese for short. I have about six in here. And they're hiding. Do you see that little one hiding in his little shell? And then there's one right here. I got them from uh, a fellow buddy from the GCCA Greater Chicago Cichlid Association. His name is Jason. And he actually has a YouTube channel called uh, Primetime Aquatics where he has a lot of tutorial videos on keeping fish and he has a lot of different very interesting fish species so I will definitely uh, have a link down below he actually made a tutorial on his tank and he has a bigger multi colony and his tank is really really awesome looking so I'll actually in the comments down below I will link that particular video so you can check it out but look at these guys so I see four right now then there's a little fry that's hiding somewhere and then there's another one but I don't know where the other one went they do hide quite a bit uh, in regards to this setup uh, I have snail shells that I bought for them because these fish species do like to hide and live in uh, snails the lake that they originally come from used to uh, be part of the sea a long long time ago and then all the snails that used to live there kind of died and it's a lake that is literally covered in shells it's pretty cool so these little fish have adopted to using their environment to survive and hide because such little fish and you know that guy right there is like pretty much almost full grown if not full grown uh, they are very easily can be preyed upon by other larger fish so to have this defense mechanism where they can hide in their shell and stay safe, like that one right there, is very important. And then these two guys are coming out as well. I hopefully will be able to start telling the males from the females apart soon, once I get a little better at figuring it out. They're really cute though, they don't have a lot of color on them, oh that one just hid in the shell. Uh, they have reflective eyes and they do have a little bit of uh, yellow on them and these nice little stripes but besides that they're not super colorful but what they make up for their lack of color and they might color up in a few days just a tiny tiny bit more once they get adjusted but they make up for it in having very interesting personality and behavior and I've kind of wanted these guys for a while they're not that easy to find Luckily, the Greater Chicago Cichlid Association, um, you know, has a lot of different members that breed a lot of small shell-dwelling species. And they were even selling some at the fish auction that I went to yesterday, but I couldn't get any more because I don't really have space to set up more tanks. And I had this filter uh, pre-cycled already, so I, I don't have a lot of other filter media ready to handle more tanks. But what these guys like is they can live in a minimum of 10 gallons, but preferably bigger. Uh, if I can get this colony to start spawning, I would like to upgrade them to probably a 20 gallon long in the future. But they are fish that stay at the bottom. I gave them a bunch of rocks from my other aquariums that have uh, some moss. No, it's not moss. It's like algae. It's the same kind of algae that uh, those moss balls are pretty much made out of so I have a lot of this algae growing on here and that's gonna help kind of keep the tank water a little clean I don't know if they're gonna nibble on this or not but it does add a little color but that's a little natural to the tank and I'm hoping that will prevent algae from growing on the shells or the walls since there's already gonna be some plants absorbing nutrients I did have a pothos plant in the corner right here with the roots that's in here hopefully that will help 
uh, absorb some of the nutrients and then I have a little bit of guppy grass up here a little more of guppy grass up here you can't really plant plants in here because these guys will kind of do their own gardening they will move things around move sand around and this will end up looking differently in a few weeks than I have set it up now they might even cover the rocks now I don't have a lot of sand actually in here I have one small bag so they don't have a whole ton of sand to dig around in but just enough I might add some more in the future but I'm super excited about these guys they're so adorable and I'm really excited that you know I'll be able to share them with you as they grow up and progress now I did also get at the rare fish auction another type of fish that is currently in a quarantine tank uh, and I will show that fish to you guys in another future video so be sure to hit that uh, bell button for the notifications so that you will know when new videos come out so you will get to see uh, all these cool and interesting fish ideally uh, if I move sometime this year I'm still on the quest for an apartment uh, if I can luckily I'm hoping if I can get a two bedroom that I can have one bedroom dedicated to some fish and maybe I can have some more nano species uh, that I can show off to you guys and share them with you because while big fish are really really awesome and interesting little tiny fish are also very cool and over oftentimes get a little overlooked a lot of people kind of uh, they don't get enough attention and love, I guess you could say. Oh, that one just hid in its little house. It's kind of cool how their eyes, depending on how the light reflects, uh, either look blue or they look yellow, which is very interesting. I'm kind of theorizing that might be a male, maybe, possibly. I definitely am glad that I have my dark brown wall, because at least it's a little easier to see this guy against a darker background. That's for sure. Oh, a little one is peeking out. I'm assuming that's a female. And I'm assuming she claimed this shell is her own. That is her home. Oh, there she hit again. Let's see if she'll pop out. These fish are so, so cute. And so interesting. I really wonder what they're going to do. And I'm that really makes me interested in, in the future of trying to get into a few other shell dwelling species because there's some really cool shell dwellers out there unfortunately they're a little bit hard to come by and even if i bred these guys i wouldn't really be able to sell these guys online to you like i will be with the bettas because oh she's peeking and she's like nope i see the camera there so i won't really be able to sell these guys because they're very sensitive and they don't really ship very well from what i've been told so because of that, oh, there's a. I think the little fry is on the other side. Yep, I, ha I got one little baby from Jason. It's right there. It's a little fry. It doesn't really belong to any particular female, so it just decided that over here is going to be its home. Uh, luckily, they're not going to prey on it, so he should be fine as long as he'll get some smaller foods. I'll try to have some baby brim shrimp for these guys because I think they'll enjoy it. But check out how awesome these guys are. I really like how I set up this tank for now. It's definitely a lot different than the tanks I usually set up, but I think it looks pretty cool. I would like to maybe in the future get some driftwood in here that would be like a spider type, and then I could attach plants at the top that these guys probably won't rip off, so it'll be like a cool canopy of plants up higher. Uh, I thought about maybe putting in one or two endler females in here uh, because they would just swim at the top, but I don't know how aggressive these guys would be once they end up spawning. But they're finally, they're, they're actually getting quite comfortable quite quickly. And they're really cute. I think maybe that one's a male. It's looking at me. I don't know. Are you a male? Are you a female? You're hiding, but I see you. They're so cute. I don't really have an educational video about these guys, which is why I'm hoping that you will check out Jason's video from Primetime Aquatics. That is because I just started owning these guys. I just got them yesterday, so I still have to kind of experience 
taking care of them. And I think I'll feed them. Oh, why are you being mean to that one? Just, you just poke that one. Um, I think I'll feed them tonight. So they're already getting a little more confident, but I'm just going to wait a few more hours of them exploring till I give them some food. But yeah, so these are my little Maltese. I hope that you'll be excited, besides bettas and guppies and endlers, to follow along in the journey of yet another very interesting fish species. They're really cool, and I really am curious to see what they will do with this tank. I hope I didn't put too many shells in here, but I guess this does give them a lot of choices into where they can establish territories and whatnot. We'll see how this turns out. And by the way, here are the males. I'll give you a little sneak peek of how the males are doing. I just fed them, they're hanging out. Um, I got some new plants today, uh, not yet today, on Friday, that I have to start planting in all my varieties of tanks. So hopefully you'll have some cool projects in the next coming days and hopefully I'm gonna make these divided setups a lot more interesting. And this guy needs um, Arnold needs to come out and hang out more. He likes to hang out in the back. I think he made a little bubble nest in there and he likes to guard it and hang out with it. But check out how huge he is. He grew really, really big. Arnold, Arnold, you're a beast. He is literally thicker and bigger, like his body's thicker than any of the other males I have. He's so crazy. So anyways, I hope that you enjoyed this really simple video. I'm just filming on my phone, kind of taking it easy. I'm getting ready to ship my first shipment of bettas tomorrow. So I'm a little nervous about that, but hopefully they will do well. Luckily, I'm only shipping a few at a time. I will add two more metallic females uh, into the store for you guys to be able to purchase. But it doesn't really seem like you guys are there interested in buying the metallics. I think you guys really want more koi and cellophanes. So because of that, I am actually considering selling some of my metallics to my local fish store or even uh, at the local GCCA swap that's coming up. I think I might have to do that because I have so many jars and I have to do daily water changes on them and it's a little, it's a little much. So if I was able to sell just a few of the metallics to a pet store and I have a very nice local pet store that really takes really good care of their fish. Um, and it's a small like mom and, mom and pops kind of store. This way I will be able to hopefully very soon start jarring uh, more of these guys as they're growing up. And hopefully grow them out a lot quicker so maybe you get, more of you guys can get some cellophanes and koi's since I do have a few more available. But because the weather is starting to get a little cooler... And I don't have a way to heat these jars. Um, I will have to, you know, kind of speed things up a little bit. And instead of having to ship like 40 fish, if I can sell some of my fish to my local fish store, I think that might be a good option. Some locally, and then the rest I will make available in my store so that way I don't have to ship a whole ton of fish. So, on that note, I will see you guys on Wednesday.